Hello! This lesson is day four, and we're going to do more linear regression. We're going to do one problem, and this problem is a little bit tougher than the other problems, just because the starting port part where you have to um, determine your ordered pairs, it's going to be slightly trickier, okay? So um, I've got a word problem here that um, is actually real data. Um, it's the evolution of the record for the mile run for the men's world record, okay? So I've got the uh, times and the year that the world record was broken for between the years of 1911 and 1933, or 1993, sorry. So if you're going to enter the data as in year and record time, so x, y, and here in the, in the, uh, the columns, it's pretty straightforward where, what x and y is, but we want to um, do this in terms of the year where t equals zero represents the year 1900, okay? So that means that this first year, 1911, if t equals 0 is 1900, then 1911 is going to rep be represented by t equals 11. All right. So you are going to do problems like this where you have to, instead of entering 1911 into your calculator, you're going to enter just the number 11. Okay. We are also going to be doing this in seconds. So we'd be converting these minute times. This is 4 minutes, 15.4 seconds. We're going to be entering this in terms of total seconds. So we would multiply 60 by 4, because there's 60 seconds in every minute, and then add 15.4. Okay? And instead of entering all of this data, because I think that's overkill, I'm only selecting the ones that are um, highlighted in gray here for you guys to enter this data. Okay? So I'm going to tell you a story about two of these runners, this dude and this dude. Okay? While you guys are entering the data into your calculator, you can just listen to my wonderful story here. So um, the reason why I highlighted these two particular runners is this Glenn Cunningham guy. He was actually um, a, a doctor. Or no, I'm sorry, that's Roger Bannister was a doctor. But this Glenn Cunningham dude, when he was, I think, eight or seven years old, seven or eight years old, he used to have the job of going into his schoolhouse to, like, start the fire. He was he grew up in one of those one room schoolhouses where all the kids all got together in literally one room and all got taught from, you know, a single teacher. And he had the job of lighting a fire um, before school so it was warm by the time they got there. And then what happened was somebody accidentally filled it with gasoline instead of kerosene and he and his brother, who would light this every day, ended up um, when they when they lit it, it sparked up and and like the entire schoolhouse caught fire. His brother actually died in the fire, and this guy ended up at eight years old, almost um, dying. But the doctors basically told his parents like he's got to remove his legs because he can't like he's gonna die if you don't remove his legs. But he he like begged and begged, pleaded to not remove them, and they didn't. And then the guy goes ahead and breaks the world record for the mile, which is insane. So. He ended up having to relearn how to walk and how to use his legs, and then I think at 26 or something, I forget his age, he actually breaks the world record, so it's pretty unbelievable what uh, somebody can do when they put their mind to it. And then this Roger Bannister guy, um, if you look at the times here, for a long time they believed, because look at this, I mean, it took them so long to break the four minute mile record, um, they thought like doctors in the medical community, people were just convinced that the human body was not built to, to run um, under, the, under four minutes. So this guy who was studying to be a doctor made it his goal, you know, to break that four minute mile record. And he, he developed all these like training techniques because he was a doctor, so he would like experiment on himself and try to, you know, maximize um, his ability to do this. All right, anyway, he goes ahead and breaks the, uh, you know, four minute world record mile time, even though the doctors told, basically the whole medical community thought it was impossible. So I thought that was kind of cool too. All right, now hopefully you guys have entered all this data and again, only those five points that I highlighted. And that data should look like this. So make sure your, your coordinates um, oops, actually look like these values here. So make sure, I'm just gonna just pause it real quick that you have these exact values in your calculator so that you get the same linear regression that I'm going to get, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and enter that into my calculator as well. Um, so remember, we're going to be, let's like quit out of here really quick. We're going to always be in stat, and we go to edit our lists. If I want to clear them, see how I already have some stuff in there from a previous class. I'm going to hit clear, 
and enter and that'll clear out the whole list so scroll up to l1 hit clear and enter and it'll clear out your whole list because you probably have data in there as well and then i'm going to start entering that data again starting with t equals 11 for 1911 and not putting in 1911. so magically boom there's my data okay so now i want to see that data graph in my scatter plot so one of the things I need to probably do, you, you probably already have this on, but my stat plot's not on, so I'm going to make sure it is on by going up there and hitting enter so that's darkened now. Um, and I want to hit stat. Oh, sorry. I want to graph in uh, my stat plot, but I'm going to do zoom 9 to fit those data points. So there's my data point, okay? Notice that this trend looks like a negative correlation because, again, as years increase, as the number of years increase here, notice that the time is going down. The time is decreasing because they're breaking the world record, so obviously it would have to go down. All right, now I want to find the line of best fit, so I'm going to go back to stat, and I want to calculate linear regression, so 4, and I go down to um, store the equation, and for those of you who don't have this interface, Instead of hitting enter, because it'll just give you the option for linear regression, right next to it, you're still going to do the same step that I'm showing right now. You hit vars, then scroll over to y vars, hit enter on function, function y1, hit enter, and we're going to calculate. And it spits out my linear regression. If I go back to my y equals, I should see the line of best fit here as well. So I want to um, make sure I take down that data to answer the first question, but I also want to graph See how I have it in my y equals now? Before I had nothing, now I have that in there. If I hit graph, now I see the line. Boom. Okay. So let's go back to our note sheet and try to answer some of these questions. All right. So we found our linear regression model. Let's pull that up. And oh, it disappeared. There it is. Whoa. Okay. So, oops. looking at our linear regression, we have an equation where we have a negative slope, and that makes sense because our line is a linear regression that has a negative correlation. Our correlation coefficient r, they also give me a negative value because it's close to negative one and look at that correlation that's really high negative one so it's almost right on negative perfect correlation okay so we have our function y equals negative 0.39 and asks us to round the equation to the nearest hundred so negative 0.39x plus 259.65 okay so this is our value um, let's talk about writing this in a sentence and explaining what slope means, okay? So our slope here, negative 0.39. Remember, our units, change in y over change in x, represents slope. The y value was the time, and that's in seconds, and the x was the year that that world record was broken. So if we have negative 0.39, then this means I'm going down 39 um, hundredths of a second, so point, negative 0.39 seconds. Now, instead of doing negative 0.39 seconds, because time is not really negative, we would say um, a decrease in of 0.39 seconds per year. Okay, so a very um, like clean sentence for explaining a decrease of 39 hundredths of a second per year would be to say something like, on average, the world record time decreases by 0.39 hundredths of a second each year. Okay, now in problem number three it says, according to the regression line, what would the world record time be in the year 1980? How accurate was our answer? Um, instead of using just the function and plugging it in like we would do previously in models, so this has a bunch of rounded numbers, right? We rounded here in both parts. Um, instead of just plugging in an input of x equals 80, and again it's x equals 80, or t equals 80, sorry, um, 
instead of using that and just plugging it into this function and, and computing it using your calculator algebraically, I would rather you just get the exact number here by using your, your linear function from your graph. So this time we're going to hit second calc and scroll down to that, well not even scroll down, just hit enter on the value because we can plug in x equals 80 now and that will give us a y output. So we get 228.317, so 228 0.3 seconds. Okay, now this value is about 3 minutes and 48 seconds. Okay, so I want to go back to my table and see how accurate that actually was. And I can see if I go to 1980 here, that is actually right on the money. 300, 3 minutes and 48 seconds. Okay, it's pretty much right, exact, same exact value that we would get. Now, the next question, though, okay, um, is kind of the big idea for the day. I'm actually going to change this value slightly, and let's make that 250, uh, 2555. So we're going to do it in the year 2555 instead of uh, 2575. But we want to know what the world record time will be in this particular year. So it's still the same idea where you have an input. This time the input, since it was year 1900 is 0, is x equals 0, then 255. 2555 should be entered as 655 in your calculator. All right, now um, go to your calculator, and this time um, when we do second value so or second calc value, and you enter 655 here, you're going to get an error message. And the reason why is because um, it can't see it at all. So if you go back to your window, you're going to understand why the calculator can't compute when x is 50, 655 because your me x max here, when you do zoom fit, is so much smaller. So let's change that x max here. And that's really all you need to change. Let's do like 700. And now when I graph it, the graph is going to look pr pretty huge over on this side, right? But I'm going to now hit second calc this time and do it again, entering 655. So in the year um, 2555, I get y equals 3.1. Okay, so in 2555, this is when x equals 655. Um, it the it meaning the world record. The world record will be 3.1. Let's see, one, two seconds. Okay, now I hope you're reading this and you're like, that sounds ridiculous. And that's because it is. There's, I mean, I know they were saying the whole four minute mile thing couldn't be done, but I'm pretty sure that this is impossible for the human body to run a mile in three seconds. Um, you know, unless we were like beaming ourselves back and forth through teleportation. But um, the reason why this is so inaccurate is because this number is so far out of our data. You know, our line before, um, when we had our zoom fit, it was limited to just the points that we created um, with our data. Now we're asking it to calculate something that's way beyond the, uh, the data set, okay? So again, I'm going to do another example problem where hopefully you can understand this concept with uh, this next question. It says, according to your regression line, how fast would a caveman, okay, living around 50,000 years ago run the mile? So I don't necessarily want you to put in an exact particular number. So if you want to do 1,900 minus 50,000, you can do that. But let's just say we put in, I don't know, negative 48,000 or negative 50,000. So this time, since we're going back in time, let's plug in negative 50,000, okay, into our function, negative 50,000. So hopefully you realize that in our window, if we were trying to calculate that, we'd have to put in negative, I don't know, let's do 51,000. And our x max, let's change that back to a little bit smaller. Doesn't necessarily matter. Let's hit graph. Okay, we can't even really see our line, but let's do second calc. And let's enter. Why isn't it doing that? Second calc, here we go. There we go, value. Let's enter negative 50,000. Oops. And we get an output of. 1900 or 19,841. So 19,841. Remind you, that's in seconds. Okay. So this is saying a caveman would take that many seconds 
which in minutes is roughly 330 uh, minutes. Okay, so that's absolutely ridiculous as well. I mean, how could a caveman, if it took him 330 minutes to walk a mile, I mean, how would he get around anywhere? I mean, we would not be in existence then. We would have clearly died out if it took us this long to travel a whole mile. So the reason why we're getting such absurd answers for those two problem sets, if you go back to your, um, your zoom and do zoom fit, and go with, so zoom 9, notice our data, our data points here, the, the data that we originally entered, covers a very small span of years in relation to what we were asking it to do. So this is the difference between extrapolation and interpolation, okay? When you extrapolate data, it's when you take an estimation for a value that lies outside your known values. So going back to our chart, these are the known values. We entered data from 1911 through 1993, right? 1911 to 1993 was our data. So that means when we first tried to find a value for 1980, we were right on the money because we were interpolating. We were finding values um, for a, you know, a number that lied within the set of known values. When we extrapolated, meaning in questions four and five, we went way outside of our data set and we plugged in a number here, 655, and you know, negative 50,000 here. We plugged in numbers that were so far out of that range. I know we didn't plug in exactly what that is asking us to plug in, but we're just giving it rough estimate here. But we got numbers that were absurd, right? This 3.12 seconds, clearly not possible. 330 minutes is also not very reasonable or realistic because a caveman would be really, 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 really incredibly slow, okay? So um, essentially, that's the idea here, um, the new idea that when you extrapolate data, when you go outside of your data set, okay, then you get unreliable information. So extrapolation is unreliable. Interpolation, on the other hand, is reasonable and it gives a pretty reasonable and accurate estimate. Okay? So that is the lesson for day four. Good.